everyone. So um, welcome to our very last session of our ALGO series. This series was brought to you by Women in Tech. Um, one thing I want to plug while you're all here is if you're interested in um, continuing this on, if you would want to even like lead a session like this in the future, we are looking for folks who might want to do that in the fall. So please feel free to reach out to me. I'll also be dropping a link to our applications for WIT eBoard. So we have a few open positions and a lot of them are actually like not very high commitment level. So if you would wanna spend like an hour or two working on things related to women in tech, we have a lot of uh, positions like that open right now. And our applications close on April 15th. I will post a link to that in the chat. Yes, unfortunately, uh, we both also have other stuff going on in terms of just, you know, school. Um, so we kind of looked at what the next topics would be. And if we were going to do future sessions, I think we would have been a little ahead of the class. So unfortunately, this will be our last session, but we hope that we can do something like this again in the fall. Yeah, that's right. So it's a bit of a feeling to have the last session for the semester, and I hope you get like most the most out of it. And in case you have any more questions or anything, we have the Slack channel on, which is the Algo series. So you can obviously ask questions and engage on on that channel for uh, any further um, topics related to the uh, technical interviews. So without further ado, today's topic is fees, which is also quite closely aligned to what you are going on in the classes. So I hope uh, a little bit of it is clear or you have a little background. So we'll quickly run through a lot of different topics right now in fees. So let me know if it's going too fast or slow today. So yeah, uh, the fees in real life looks something like this, where you have a root uh, uh, some tree which is growing up and you have the branches and some leaves out of it but what we do in computer science is just invert it like visualize the tree upside down where you have root at the top and you have the branches coming out from it and going downwards uh, and some of the terminologies that we use in trees are root which is the first element of the uh, tree which does not have any parent element apart from root all other nodes have only one parent like exactly one parent no element can have zero parent or no element can have more than two parents then within each node you have a key uh, so yeah, uh, you have a key which indicates what value is inside the node and you have uh, a links to other pointers which points to other nodes. Basically here you see two nodes, uh, two links which are called edges uh, and you can also call it like the left edge and the right edge since it's a binary tree which has two nodes here but yeah later you, you also see there is a three edges over here. So till now we have covered the root some value which is inside it, which is the key or edge. Uh, then each node has a parent and parents obviously have their children. So the, the nodes falling below are the children of it. Even for like uh, P, you can also call L is a children, not the immediate children, but like a grandchildren of it. Then the nodes which are on the same level. So level is something which starts like P is at the first level. Then Q, R is the second level. A, B, C, D is the third level. So the ones which goes horizontally, you can imagine a line over here, which is called the level. So the nodes which are at the same level are called siblings of each other, which have a common parent. So A and B have uh, are at the same level and have a common parent. So they are called siblings of each other. And any tree which you make inside a bigger tree is called like a subtree. And the nodes which are at the last level is called the leaf nodes. Uh, and all other nodes are called the non-leaf node. So a quick question here, is B a leaf node or a non-leaf node? A leaf. Yeah, that's right. Uh, and the height of the tree is the maximum level that you can go for a tree. So any node which has the highest uh, number of children below it, define the number of children defines the height of the tree so for here we have p node which has 
like one, two, three, four children below it. So uh, the height of the tree is uh, four starting oh. index zero or one, uh, five starting index one. Any questions so far related to the terms? Are you all familiar with this term or was any of the term new for you? Okay, so then the next is we'll look at different sorts of tree. So for uh, uh, NRE tree has uh, N, which defines the maximum number of children that it can have. So it is four or less than four. So here, uh, when N is four, you have a four array tree. And then when N is two, you have a binary tree, which is most popularly used. And we'll, we'll talk about binary trees in detail. But whatever you learn over here can easily be extended and applied to an N array tree. Then the next is a full or a perfect uh, tree. So full or perfect means that all the levels have uh, all all of its capacity to be full so for each level you have the first level can have two power zero nodes that is one node then the second level would have two power one nodes which uh, can i annotate here yeah okay so this has two power zero nodes which is one then the second level has two power one nodes which is two then the third level has two power two nodes which is three and last like going forward the nth level would have which is four sorry um, which would have two to the power n nodes so basically it has two power n plus one minus one nodes so any tree which has this many number of nodes given n is the level you can uh, say it's a perfect binary tree and the complete is also somewhat similar, but only difference is that any, uh, the last level could have incomplete nodes, as in uh, the, the node with n minus one level is completely full, similar to this, but the last could have incomplete nodes and the ones which are there should be filled from starting. So had the team been like this, it's not a complete binary tree. Make sense? Okay. So moving forward. Yeah. Okay. So then. Yeah. So the next is balance versus unbalanced tree. Balance is where uh, the difference between any any node, the left and the right sub tree height is at max one. So it could be zero or one. So take any node, for example, choose from the binary tree and then calculate the height difference. So for example, this particular node has left and right sub tree as zero. So its height is zero. This has left one and right zero. You can imagine there is no sub tree over here. It's a null. So then it has height of one. So one minus zero is one. Then for similarly for this one, the the uh, left sub tree is two and the right sub tree is two. So two minus two is again zero. So consider any node from this tree and you'll get the difference uh, zero or one. If it goes beyond one, then you can say it's not a balanced tree, like the one here. So here you have, uh, for this particular node, you have the left subtree as zero, uh, as one, and the right subtree as one, two, three, four nodes. So there are, the difference is three, four minus one. So it's not a complete binary, uh, complete uh, balance. It's not a balanced tree. Okay, so quick question. So how many nodes in this uh, tree makes it an unbalanced tree? How many nodes are there which violates the condition? And can you name which are the nodes which fail that condition?
टू ओके ऑलगा विच वन फाइव एंड सिक्स वाई डू यू से फाइव एंड सिक्स they go beyond the difference of one the uh, requirement that you can't have like more than one note uh no sorry so then i must explain uh, it's not properly explained so what i mean is uh, do you know understand what is the height of the tree yeah so for example what is the height of this particular node one Uh, no so it's not starting from the top but it's starting from down so then are you if we're counting the gray spaces it's 2 for 2 yeah that's right so it's the number of nodes in the left or the right whichever is maximum so had there been like two more nodes over here then the height would have been 4 make sense yeah so here then which are the nodes which violates the condition and makes it unbalanced okay let's try for each uh, node so starting from below so what is the height of this nodes left and right so uh, what is the height of this node okay that's a zero zero that's definitely true this one 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 okay four two two then three three and four uh -huh. so yeah that that's right so this is the height and how do you get the height height is the maximum of left and right so here there are for left there is no subtree and right there is no subtree so this is maximum of 0 and 0 then 1 is nothing but maximum of 1 uh, 0 which is the left subtree and 1 which is the right subtree so here you can imagine there is a null pointer over here so null is an empty tree so that's why you have 0 and there is one node over here so maximum of 0 and 1 becomes 1 and the difference between 0 and 1 is also 1 the absolute difference so it, with it which still falls under our limit and this is what is making it balanced so far but when you come to 4 you have maximum of 0 and 2 so the difference between left and right subtree's height is 2 which goes beyond 1 so this is something which fails the condition of a balanced binary tree and makes it unbalanced similarly for 3 you have maximum of 0 and 3 which makes it again unbalanced how about 1 it takes maximum of what is the left subtree height 1 and the right subtree height is 1 2 3 4 So again, four minus three is one. Is three, which is again making it unbalanced. And two, it's again balanced because it's maximum of zero and zero, which is zero. So here, the nodes three and two uh, and four are the ones which are making it unbalanced. So okay, quick question. So has if the tree was something like this, five. Two, one, and say, okay. So here, which nodes are the ones which are creating it unbalanced? The extended tree has uh, eight, five, and one added over here. Eight, five, and one. anyone you can just unmute yourself and speak it out sorry could you repeat the what, what's the question um uh, yeah sure so we have the 
Yeah, I've extended the tree to have eight, five, and one, and the original tree is already there. So you have one, two, three, eight, five, four, one, five, six. So which nodes make this tree unbalanced? Or is it an unbalanced or a balanced tree? First question. It's unbalanced. Yeah, and which are the nodes which violate the condition of being balanced? Would it still be the three and the four from the right side that would still make it unbalanced? Yeah, that's right. And on the left side, are there any nodes which are contributing? No, yeah, Alba, that's right. So from two, eight, five, one, the difference is still limited to one. So we don't have any anyone making unbalance. And how about one? Is it a balance or unbalanced? So what is the height of the left subtree of one? How many nodes do you see maximum in the left side of the subtree? Three, yeah, that's right. And of the right. The right subtree of one. What is the height of that? Four. Good job, Olga. So, yeah, and Selena, you are right as well. So, the difference between three and four is still one. So, previously one was unbalanced, but now one is balanced because of the extended nodes below it. Any questions on the balance and the unbalanced part? I know this is a little confusing concept. So the key is that you find the height of its left subtree and the right subtree. So find the height of the left subtree, right subtree, and then find the difference between the two. If the difference is being less than one, then it's a good node. And if any node has difference greater than one, so then it becomes a unbalanced tree. Um, I'm curious if I also annotate this um, to illustrate my question. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. So if I, if there was a node here, then like this one's maximum, it include like it's four because it counts that the one I just drew. Yeah, that's right. Why is it not just like looking at the, like, why would you include the left subtree of a right subtree. Oh, sorry, what's your question? Instead of just counting the left subtrees consistently, it goes down a right subtree and again a left subtree. Yeah, so it treats this as a black box. The one, uh, so this, the one that the subtree below it is considered as a black box right now. Mm -hmm. And it just calculates the height, maximum height of this. So whichever goes to the deep, deepest level from the root of that subtree. So this will go at the deepest level at one, two, three, three, and the plus one for this corresponding node. That becomes four. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and a quick question after this. So once you have added this node, is this still balanced or unbalanced? Uh, it's it's still balanced. Uh, you don't find any node. Oh wait, no, no, no. Sorry, because of the because of this node right here. This one. Uh, no, uh, it also has left as zero, right as zero. Nope. So then zero minus zero is again zero. But this is correct. Any other node which valid? I'm like, it's the first one. This one. So what's the height of the left tree? Four. Okay, and of the right? Sorry, right is this. Oh, well, it's also four. Um, no, that's not four. What is the height of this tree? Three. Three, yeah. So four minus one is three. Probably. Which is still the difference is one. 
Mm-hmm. Any other node which violates in your view? Anyone on uh, the chat as well? Let me annotate the notes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Well, the note two, its height is three hmm? on the left and one on the right. Correct, yeah. Okay. So that's why two is one which is making it unbalanced. That's right, yeah. It's a difficult concept, but there are like, uh, so if a T is balanced, then you can ensure that the runtime of it doesn't go very bad. As in anything that you search for it or just iterate through the nodes, you can go maximum till the depth of the T. And if the depth is quite closely aligned with the difference of one, then you can ensure that uh, your runtime is quite good. So it goes in the order of log n because of this condition. And if the tree is not balanced, then there are algorithms like AVLC or red black tree, which makes it balanced. So this is a pretty important concept uh, for trees. Okay. So moving forward. Um, yeah, so then we have skewed trees, which means uh, that the tree doesn't have its uh, subtrees filled fully. It has either the right subtree or the left subtree missing. So this uh, pathological tree has either one left or right missing. Left skewed tree has always the right part missing for every node. And right skewed tree is, has always the left part missing for each node. So the, the skewed tree, if it is not of height, uh, one, like it is more more than height two, then it's obviously unbalanced every time because the root node will violate the condition. Make, make sense? Like all skewed trees of height two or more are always unbalanced. Does this sentence make sense? Yeah. Okay, then binary search tree. Uh, have you, uh, has the professor taught about binary search tree in the class? Yeah, so can anyone explain me what is binary search tree? You can also type in the chat. It can be a very rough description. Just uh, help us know what you remember. Yeah. Um. Is it? Wait. Can I say it? Yeah. Sure. You can say. It. Um. So. Is it a tree that um, gonna be that every time the child from the right of the parent gonna be bigger, the number gonna be bigger, and the child from the right from the left of the parent gonna be smaller, and we just keep going on like that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's sort of a very accurate definition. So does it have to be only for its uh, subchild or all the? Child, uh, all the children below it. Sorry. So the condition that you mentioned that the right subtree should be greater than the root node and the no. left Oh yes, but and each of them, like each of the child's gonna be greater than is yeah. like the parent. Yeah. So if I have like a node like this five. No, so that ten? has to be like bigger than 10 because yeah. it's from the left. Uh, okay, so it has to be bigger than the 10? Yes. So can I put 11 over here? Yes. Um, okay, so if I put 11 over oh, here... Oh, sorry, that needs to be smaller <laughs> because it's from the left. Okay, so then what is a good number that I can put over here? 
Um, you can put um, nine. Nine, okay. Yeah, so because nine is greater than eight and also lesser than 10. So you can put anything which is greater than eight and lesser than 10 over here. Similarly, uh, what is a good number that I can put say for a left sub three of seven? If I had to put a node over here, what is a good number that would fit in? Um, so it needs to be bigger than six, but smaller than seven. So mm -hmm. you can't really put in an integer there. Yeah, not an integer, but you can put value like 6.5 double. Oh, so office. you can put... Um, um, Six and a half. Yeah, six and a half will definitely be. And any number that you recommend on the right of seven? Um, so that can be seven and a half. Okay, can I put eight and a half? No, because we have eight as the, as the um, root. Okay, yeah, that's right. So that's pretty much what it is. So it does not have to apply at immediately its children node, but also beyond its children. So going in the entire left subtree should be smaller and the entire right sub subtree should be larger than the node. And Biggie also mentions numbers that are smaller than the parent are to the left and the greater to the right. Yeah, that's right, Bigya. And it will be displayed in order. Uh, what do you mean uh, displayed in order? Kush? You can display the um, three. The basically, way. it will be um, display like um, uh, in order, uh, like a uh, terms of uh, um, I would say. Um, how can I say? Um, basically, it describe uh, like um, uh, the nodes like uh, will have like a. Uh, links to other nodes and then um, um, in binary tree we can also um, call the left node and right node like that just for the like binary tree information before you ask for that so i just post okay yeah so you can just iterate through it like a normal binary tree it's what you are saying so it's also a binary key, but it's also a subclass of uh, yeah. a binary key. So yeah, you have subclass this subclass and then yeah. um, their children. Yeah, so he's saying something like this. So you have binary keys, which has a binary subtree as only few few trees which are eligible for the binary subtree. So it doesn't go the other way around. So all, all the binary such trees are binary keys, but not all binary trees are binary search trees. You can also imagine like a layer on top of it, which says n array trees. So all binary trees are n array trees, but not all n array trees are binary trees. Is that what you're trying to say? Yes. Okay, yeah, makes sense. Thanks for bringing it to our notice. Okay, so yeah, I think basically all the terminologies, uh, the wow. main ones related to the trees are covered. So whenever you are uh, ask any problem related to bind, uh, to trees in the interview, then it's good always to think about different possible trees, uh, different sort of trees that you can find. So you ask the interviewer like, is it a binary tree or could be an NRA tree? Does it have to be full, complete, balance on balance, dense, sparse? Uh, what sort of a tree it is? It, is it a skewed or not skewed? So, and also particularly if there is a binary search tree mentioned in the question, then only treat it as a search tree where you have the conditions left nodes lesser and the right nodes greater. Otherwise, do not just assume that it's a binary search tree and just start working on the problem like that. So highlighting this will also make the interviewer aware that you are also thinking holistically in terms of different cases. It's very important to bring this up in the interview when you are asked for any trees problem. Yeah, that's like a brownie point to just mention in the interview of different sorts of trees that you know of. 
So yeah, we'll start with some lead code questions now. We have about 30 minutes to do some questions. Let's see how far we can get. So the first one is finding the maximum depth of the bind uh, of the tree. So yeah, again, depth is like the height where you say how deep is the node. So how many nodes below it are there or not. The one, the depth is what we check for being balanced or not. So if you are given a root node and you have to find its depth. So how do, you, what is your logic to find the depth? Anyone? Uh, I guess to see like the greatest number of like children it could have. Mm -hmm. So the depth of three would be like, Three. Depth of three would be, yeah, you can just. So, yeah, so the, for three, it's three, and then for a three, which is one null two, it's two. So, one, then null means there is no left sub three, and then two is on the right. So for this, it's two. So how would you like code it? Any suggestions or ideas you have? So how did you find that depth for this is three? So you get... Oh, yeah, I sort of been going. Down. So like starting at the leaf nodes, mm -hmm. if like, call those, say that they have a depth of one, then you go to its parent. Mm -hmm. And so when you go to 20, you can both of them have, like both of the children of 20 have a depth of one. So you could, it can be like one plus one. Okay. And how did the second one come? The second one as a, like one plus what did you consider from the left and right? Uh so because they're equal, we it could be either, but if it if one were greater, you'd consider the greater one and add one to it. Okay, so then the maximum of it's mm -hmm. left or right. So you use basically one plus maximum of its left or right. And then for the roots, you considered one. Mm -hmm. that's, that's pretty much what the algorithm for this code is. Should we code it together? So yeah, if you said if the root is null, uh, if the root is a leaf node, that is it's right and left is null. So you identify uh, a leaf node, then it's a left and right both are null. If either one of them is null, then it's not a, a, a leaf node. So if both it's left and right are uh, null, sorry, then you return one. Otherwise, you return one plus the maximum of its left sub tree and right sub tree depth. So how do you get the left and right? So it's just calling the de maximum depth of its left tree and right sub tree. Make sense? So what we are doing is we are first checking if it's both left and right are null. So that means it's a root node. And then we are checking the maximum depth of his left subtree and right subtree. We are putting it into different variables and taking the maximum of left or right and then adding one and returning whichever is the maximum. Any questions on this? Oh, I think there's a typo. Thank you. 
Oh, Max is not here. It's Matt dot Max. Yeah, so it works for this case. It's giving null pointer exception. Any idea why? So for this case, when you try, it has one and two. So basically what's happening in this code is you are calling say max depth on one, on the root, which is one. The function is being called here with the entire three going here, one and two. And then it's checking if root dot right is equal to null and root dot left is null. So right now it's uh, right is null and left is not null. So then it will go to this part of the code where left sub for the left sub key, it will just call it on the max depth of root dot left. So then it's calling max depth of null. The left is null, right? So when the max depth with null is called, when the root itself is null, you are trying to access the root dot right and root dot left on it, which is you cannot have null dot left or null dot right. So you are missing the case where even before checking root dot right, you have to check for the condition. What if root itself is null? It's not given. Make sense? Do you understand why this is the error? Could you go over that again? I don't think I've followed. Uh... Yeah, so our case is one and two as a as, as in this tree, right? The left is null. So far you are with me. Our input t one null two is represented like this. Yeah. Okay. And then when you call max depth, it's called on one which is the root right now. So your caller function is max depth of one. One is just a pointer that you are passing to this particular node. So it has the all, all the links below it, but with the root, you are passing the address of one over here. Then you are checking if it's right is null and the left is null. So you're basically checking whether it's a leaf node or not. So here it will give a false for root dot right is null because right has something, so it's not null. So it will not go inside this and it will instead try to go into lines 21, 22, 23. So when it goes to 21, the first is you are now trying to calculate the max depth on its left uh, subtree. So then the call will go to max depth of null. So when you are trying to call max depth of null, it again goes here, starts with null dot right is equal to null or null dot left equal to null. So when it's trying to do null dot right, it says like you cannot apply a right on a null because it's not a defined node. So th this is where it breaks when it calls the left subtree. So we can just put a debug point and also see if you want. So let's put like a debug point. And debugger. And we'll just limit the case to also to this one, which is not working. Okay, so your root is one, null and two right now. You go inside and it does not go here because root dot right is not satisfied. Then you try to call root dot left and now your root is null because your root dot left is null. And when you try to call a null over here, it will break saying that 
you cannot have null pointer exception you cannot have a write called on null so root dot my root dot write equal to null cannot be checked on a null value make sense now yeah that makes sense thanks yeah so just to fix it then what should i do so we have to handle for the case where root is null so when root is null like you are given an empty tree then what would its value be you basically you don't have anything uh, to add to the height so okay. you just add zero yeah so then you will just try to run it works now then we'll just run with all the cases okay yeah so it works any questions on this problem if not let's move to a second one so i'm planning to cover like since we are short on time just one of pre order in order or post order so any preference on which towers will we want to do in the session and the rest two you can do as the homework i think in class we just previewed in order so maybe that one okay so you want to do the similar in the class or you want to try a different one uh the same the same okay yeah so we'll do the in order one okay so anybody could help me with what the in order traversal means so for this tree the output is 1 3 2 but do you have idea of what does it mean to have output of 1 3 2 okay so maybe let's quickly draw on the sketch pad so given a tree like this 1 2 and 3 4 5 6 and 7 we'll quickly go through all the three traversals and how it looks like for all so pre order means that the node is processed before any of its sub children and for the sub children the left sub tree is processed first and then the right sub tree so pre is like before so before any before processing any of my child please process myself every node is saying that before considering my children please do consider me so that's when you start always at the root so then root node of 1 will say please consider me so you give the output 1 and then you consider its left and right subtree so then you try to call its left subtree and the left subtree will say uh, please consider me before my children so then you have 2 so after 2 you can call its left and right once you have processed the node then you can call its left and right so 2 is processed so you can call 4 so after four you you can call its left sub tree but since it is null you don't print anything since it is after left sub tree the order goes for right sub tree and since it is null you don't call anything you return back to four and the four is completed so now the the left part of two is done so you can move to the right part of two that's when you can add five as soon as you encounter the node and then try to process its left and right part which is again null so then you go back from 5 and say i am also complete and then 2 will also say that i am also complete since my children are complete so for 1 the left subtree is processed and now you can move forward to the right subtree and for right since 3 is encountered first it will say in pre order please process me so 3 is done and then you go for its left and right children 
in left you have six and after six uh, pr being processed you process its left and right subtree which is again null and null so once null and null both are processed six says i'm done so then you can move to the right part of it where seven says please process me before then the left and right of seven and seven are processed which is null so then it goes back to seven saying i'm complete and then it goes back to three saying that uh, i'm i'm also complete and then three says uh, three and two says we both are complete so one is also complete so pre order looks like 1 2 3 4 5 3 6 7 7 where the node is treated before any of its children and the children are treated in the order of left and right any questions on this okay similarly the in order will say that uh, please uh, consider the left subtree first then the node and then the right subtree so then in the similar way 1 2 3 4 5 6 and 7 so here now we have to process the entire left subtree once the left is complete then only you can process the node and then you move to the right part so for one you give a call to the left of two left subtree which is two then two also it has a left subtree so you call, give the call caller to two to four and then four goes it to null so null say null doesn't have anything so it returns from the left saying that i have nothing and since the left of four is done now it goes and prints four then the right of four is processed which is null and then four is marked done so once the left is complete then the node itself is processed which is two then the right of it is considered which is five and then since the left the entire left subtree is complete you consider the node itself which is one for this now you can move to the right part where again you'll uh, call 3 and see if it's it has a left child it has so now you call the left of 3 which is 6 again you call the left of 6 which is null and since null doesn't have anything it returns back so once left is processed you consider the node itself which is 6 then you have since the left part of 3 is complete you can go forward for 3 and then you can call 7 and since the right is complete the tree on uh, this 3 says it's complete and 1 says i'm complete so this is the in order traversal make sense was this similar that was taught in the class okay so then for this 1 2 3 uh can you just quickly uh help me to draw out how the call call function should look like so for one uh does it have any left subtree no so here there is a null so then null will return back and since the left is complete you can treat one So you can process one. Then the calling function goes to the right. Two. Does it have any left subtree? Yes. So then it goes here to the three. Then three. Does it have any left left subtree? It has null. Not nothing. So it comes back over here. And then you can print three. Then it goes to the right of three, which is null. So it doesn't do anything. Comes back over here. so the left is complete now three has itself left and right both process so it's complete and since the left subtree of two is complete so now you can process two so that's when you can process two and then the right subtree of it would be processed which is again null and then it would return back from here uh, since it's complete two is also complete and then one will also be complete and the answer is 1 3 2 
Okay, let's quickly try one more example. One, two, three, four, and say five. What would the in order look like for this? You can just unmute yourself and say or type it in the chat. Okay, five, two, one, then four, and once you have processed four, three. Yeah, looks good. Uh, good job, Divya and Grace. So let us code for it. So do you know how to call it? Recursively. So basically, you treat all its left children first and the right children afterwards. And you have to put it into a list of integer. So I'll just make a list of integer where you process the result and just make a new array list. We'll keep on adding our integers to this result and return the result. And before the re re returning the result, we have an in-order helper function where we'll pass the root node. And then the helper function will do nothing but keep on adding the results to our result variable, which is key node root. So this is where your in order would be calculated. And you check if root is null, then you just return, you don't do anything. But if not, then you call it on the left subtree first. Then you process the node. So you just add your result to the root to the result, the value of the root to the result. And then you process the right part of it. So this basically says uh, when the root is null, just return from there. Otherwise process the left part first, then process me, which is the 24th line and then process my right side. Make sense? So yeah, the result is this, and we can also quickly check for the tree that we have built, which is one, two, three, five, then null, and then we have four. Uh, it's not a valid tree. We have one, two, three, five. Okay, there is a comma missing. Yeah. And that's what we had also in the chat. So that's right. And this could also be done recursively, but the code would be longer and it would be using stacks instead. So we do have a couple of questions still left and I wanted to cover the level order traversal, but we don't have time right now. So if you want, we can continue one more session or if not, then we can just coordinate offline over the uh, algorithm group. So if there's enough uh, demand then we can have one more session to co go over the other order traversals and the level order traversal as well, or searching in the binary tree. Okay. Kush said he's interested. Oh, okay. Anybody else? Mm -hmm. Is there like any chance we could do like two, three binary trees and three, four binary trees too? Uh, binary the trees. The next session? I don't know if they're binary trees or, but yeah, that's something that would be helpful. Like, I think really. The two, three ones and two, three, four ones. Uh, what do you mean by two, three ones? As in an array tree? Uh, I'm like, not sure. Yeah, those, yeah. I think we talked about it in our class. So um, it was the one that's like every node can has two values and can have three children. Okay, so here you, uh, it's like a segment tree. So uh, yeah, in between you can have, 
okay yeah sure i i can understand what you yeah two three yeah. binary search i mean like for next session if you're looking okay. yeah sure you okay have planned. yeah sure we can do that so basically you have like a, a bigger tree over there so are we going to have another session next week uh yeah that's what we are planning but just to understand that i got your concept right so we have uh, something like this 5 uh, and say 8 and any number which is between 5 and 8 goes in the middle which is 6 any number which is lesser than 5 goes here and the ones which is greater than 8 goes here and similarly like you can even have 7 and 8 over here which will make it again a lesser number a between number between them sorry 9 and 10 over here so on the right side only the ones which are greater than 8 can go so 9 and 10 and something like 9.5 over here is that what you are saying oh yeah that's right but i what we learned is like i think these were about balanced trees if i if that's the right word do you want me to like just check i'll just quickly check what exactly it was but mm -hmm. yeah i think i would like more practice on that part I'll okay Uh, yeah, if you all could um, post, I don't know, like the specific slides or something, because I know when we get into those kinds of trees, there's a lot of different ones. So just so we can make sure that we're covering what what you're actually going over in class. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, do you want me to like share my screen and show you what it was? Yeah, sure. Sure. Okay. Uh, and I'm gonna stop the recording here too.